Good night. Friday night look at life here in the southeast. Now tonight, today it's been a very busy day indeed on the industrial and business front. This morning, employers and unions joined in a plea to save the papermaking industry, which employs 13,000 people in the southeast. There's more news on the ill-fated Ramsgate Dunkirk ferry service. We've the first interview with the ferry boss Ole Lauritsen since the closure. And still at sea, Donald Dougal sets out to discover the secrets of the Goodwin Sands. We'll also be meeting the man who's thought up the proposals to bring an end to shamatrism in athletics. And we've also got all the sport and, of course, all the weekend events and the weather. But we start with the news from Sarah Kennedy. Kent County Council today announced a package of economies aimed at reducing spending on social services by around a million pounds a year. At the same time, the council warned that they'd trimmed social services right down to the bone. Roger Livingstone reports. The announcement was made by the chairman of the Social Services Committee, Mr Edward Moore. He pointed out that all council committees have been asked to make further savings, not just his. But that didn't make it any easier, he said. And he added that after this latest exercise, his committee would find it extremely difficult, if not impossible, to reduce their budget yet again without actually cutting whole sections of the service they provide at present. In an effort to make the cuts as fair as possible, the committee have made them right across the board. Among the busy biggest cuts they'll make will be in staffing, where they're aiming to save £170,000. On top of this, they're planning to save £120,000 by cutting back on training schedules, and £100,000 by increasing the price of meals at day centres and by reducing the standard of maintenance in residential homes. The biggest saving of all, £290,000, has already been agreed. It involves putting up the minimum charge for a home help to one pound, and it starts next month. A man wanted for questioning about the murder of a prostitute at London's Savoy Hotel was arrested by police at South End today. They were alerted by the licensee of a seafront hotel where the man was having a drink. Later, the man accompanied Scotland Yard detectives back to London to help with their inquiries into the murder of the prostitute, who was found stabbed to death in a room at the Savoy. Emergency services were called out at Tunbridge Wells in Kent today after two railway wagons loaded with heating oil rolled from a siding and crashed down an embankment. The derailment in North Farm Road happened at about 1.30 this morning. One of the wagons came to rest against an electricity pole and there were fears of a fire or even an explosion. The danger there was quickly eliminated but police say it'll be two days before North Farm Road is cleared and reopened to traffic. It's thought that the transporters slipped from the siding because the parking brakes hadn't been set properly. Kent's Fire and Public Protection Committee are being asked to press for tighter laws concerning the escape of wild animals from zoos. The move follows a road accident at Petham near Canterbury in which two youths were killed when a wild antelope leapt over a hedge onto their car. As the law stands, safari parks aren't required to report the escape of animals like antelopes. The councillors in Kent believe that they ought to be, and they're demanding that the escape of all potentially dangerous animals or birds be reported to police within 24 hours, and that checks be kept on the efforts made to recapture them. The leader of Canterbury Council, Councillor Arthur Porter, received the keys to the city's new civic offices today. They were handed over by a director of Wiltshire's, the firm who've built the complex in Military Road at Canterbury. It took them two years, and the cost was just under two and a half million pounds. But the council think it's money well spent, as they'll now be able to house all their staff under one roof. The first departments will start moving in on Monday week, October 13th. The South East Thames Regional Health Authority have published their draft proposals for reorganising the National Health Service in Kent and East Sussex. To save money, the government have decided to remove the area health authorities and increase the size of the district authorities. In Kent, the regional health authorities say they prefer to reduce the present number of districts from six to four by amalgamating Maidstone with Tunbridge Wells and Canterbury and Thanet district with South East Kent. In East Sussex, they're recommending that Hastings combine with Eastbourne to reduce the number of districts from three to two, 
and they're suggesting that Brighton remain as it is. Well, a new road has been opened on the Frinsbury Peninsula near Rochester. It'll provide access to a new industrial estate, 130 acres of potential factories with hundreds of new jobs. Development's been held back because of a legal wrangle over the road, but now councillors are predicting a prosperous future for the area. By contrast, local people say the extra traffic will spoil their lives, and they staged a protest at today's opening ceremony. And finally, a woman from Eastry near Deal is 102 years old tomorrow. She's Mrs Eliza Hermitage of Eastry House at Eastry. Last year she celebrated her birthday with a day trip to Calais and the year before she flew to Jersey. This year she settled for a tea party with a few friends. She denies she's slowing down. That's the end of the news. And that's it for another week. I hope you're going out, going out to enjoy all that sunshine and have a, a very good weekend. We shall be back, of course, with uh, Day by Day and South Sport on Monday. Then, of course, on Wednesday, See Me Week returns and Scene South East will be with you again on Friday. So have a good weekend. We'll see you on Monday. <laughs>